Welcome everyone to Big Monday presented by Bud Light. Tonight from sold out Freedom Hall, two top 20 teams go head to head as number 13 Notre Dame visits 20th ranked Louisville. It has been an eventful eight days for the Cardinals. Sunday, January 4th against Kentucky. Edgar Sosa, deep three in the final seconds to give them a three-point win, 74-71. Then Saturday at Villanova, the Cardinals survived the flurry of last-second opportunities for the Wildcats and held on for a 61-60 win. Louisville 2-0 for the first time ever in Big East Conference play. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough, along with Jay Billis and Bill Raftery. Delighted to have you with us for the first Big Monday of the year. For Jay, year five of Big Mondays. For Bill, too many Big Mondays, or Bud Lights to count, for that matter. Uh, Jay, uh, there's certainly been quite a eight days for Louisville, and Rick Pitino concerned about mental and physical fatigue. Well, and fatigue is going to be real key in this game. Fatigue for Notre Dame as well, and Louisville's going to try to push the tempo. They want to press to try to wear down these Notre Dame guards that play so many minutes. The the key is, are they going to be able to score in order to put that pressure on? And Notre Dame's had a good week as well. Wins at home over Georgetown and Seton Hall. And Luke Heron Gody continues to play like perhaps the best player in the country. Fellow, the suits are very conservative. Uh, <laughs> Luke is not conservative, though. Terrific game. 40 points. The ability to get up and down the floor. I think it's key that Notre Dame's able to handle the pressure and get him some touches. He's got quick feet. He's got a clever release. He has stepped out to make shots like this. He is a load. And that's a compliment in basketball parlance. Well, Luke Herringote, over his last eight games, he is averaging 26 points and 14 rebounds, two 30-point games in a row. He is a stud inside. And Earl the Maestro, his ability to find people and mix it up, whether it's the middle game, the long game, or the post-up game, he is solid. And the starting lineups for tonight's game. Notre Dame comes in at 12 and 3 overall, 3 and 1 in conference, the highest scoring team in the Big East. Torrey Jackson, the point guard, with two of the best three point shooters in Notre Dame history, McElarney and Ayers. And a two man front court of Hillsland, a role player, does a little bit of everything. And Heron Gody having a monster junior season, the reigning Big East player of the year. Louisville, 11 and 3, 2 and 0 in the Big East, one of the best defensive teams in the country, holding their opponents to under 60 points per game. The backcourt of Edgar Sosa, who's played well in the last three, and Jerry Smith. And up front, Earl Clark filling the stat sheet with Terrence Williams having a terrific senior season and the freshman Samardo Samuels, one of the most highly touted freshmen in the country. On our telecast tonight, we will shine the spotlight brightly on Luke Herringote. He'll talk with Jay Billis about his quick release. And we'll begin a countdown of the top 30 moments of the last 30 seasons in college basketball as ESPN celebrates 30 years bringing you this great sport. And we'll preview the game that follows in our first big Monday of this season, the Big 12 matchup between Texas and Oklahoma. A.J. Abrams and Blake Griffin among the stars on display in that one. It's only appropriate that a great player abuse Jay again. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take a great player to do that. That's been proven. Jim Burr. That is not Jim Burr. Jim Burr will be our. <laughs> he should look so good. Matter of fact, Rick Petito thought the officiating was for the Bird Saturday <laughs> against Villanova and made his displeasure quite public. Rick is in his eighth season here at Louisville, has had them in the NCAA tournament five of the last six years. And Mike Bray, the head coach at Notre Dame in his ninth season. He's been the Big East Coach of the Year each of the last two seasons. Jim Burr will throw the ball in the air with Carl Hess and Bob Donato, our officials. Louisville in the home white, and Samardo Samuels got the tip. Louisville attacks quickly, and Terrence Williams scores five seconds into the game. And immediately, Louisville able to put on some full court pressure. Notre Dame is going to have to present themselves as receivers, help the guards get the ball up the court. A little 2 3 zone, Sean. What kind of principles that? Uh, with some merit principles. Corey Jackson nearly turned it over as Sosa got a hand on it. Ryan Ayers missed a three. Earl Clark the rebound in traffic. And now Sosa, the junior. Williams swooping in the lane. Aaron Goldie the rebound. 
one thing Rick Pitino said, they got to ring the bell in order to get the press going. So they're going to have to make some shots tonight. Hills land. He was fouled on the way to the basket. You know, last year, Louisville got off very quickly, had a 15 point halftime lead in the game here at Freedom Hall against Notre Dame and held on to win by five. They survived a late three point blizzard from the Fighting Irish. So Hills land at the line. Three time Big East academic all star, as you saw in the just completed fall semester, he had a 3.9. Grade point average. He's a marketing major in their Mendoza College of Business, above the Mendoza GPA <laughs> line. <laughs> you may have sat next to him at Syracuse if he were a student there, just to help your GPA. Take all the help you can get to get through the Harvard of Central New York. <laughs> Hillsland, who has scuffled a bit from the free throw line, makes two. He is shooting just 51 percent for the year coming in. Of course, a little pressure. Notre Dame not known for it. A lot of guys like to press a pressing team. Just to slow the advance. Yep. That's a little one, two, two, three quarter court pressure now back in an odd man front zone. Earl Clark jacks a three. Samuels at good position inside, and it's out of bounds. Last touched by Notre Dame. And that's the one thing in those matchup zones. You must get a body on somebody. Well, especially Samuels, one of the better offensive rebounders in the Big East, averaging about three per game. Aaron Goody, one of the best, averaging over four. Big thing with Samuels is staying on the floor. Don't get fatigued. Foul problems an issue on occasion. Samuels went one on one with Aaron Goody and missed the little jump hook. Aaron Goody the rebound. He's averaging a double double plus for the year. Aaron Goody led the Big East in scoring and rebounding last year. Just the second player ever to do that. Troy Murphy the other. So Aaron Goody in position to do it two years in a row. Well, I'm impressed with his, his footwork. Very light on his feet as well. Uh, Louisville was in man after the miss. Notre Dame needs a better shot than that. Try to hit the long pass to Clark at the rim. He couldn't corral it. And then Jackson turned it back over. Williams one on one on Ryan Ayer. What a nice job forcing a tough shot and then a great checkout. You know, Williams can get to the rim almost at will. But when he gets there, he's not the type of player that goes in there to dunk. I mean, with that body and athleticism, he needs to go up strong and go right into Ryan Ayers to draw that foul and also to complete the play. And pretty good fundamentals defensively, though, as well. Yeah, a solid defensive play. But, you know, I might be nitpicking a little bit with Williams. He's a magnificent player, but I think he can be even better. He kept the dribble alive. Six crossing half court. The crowd wanted to travel. McElarney a miss, and it got pinballed around to Edgar Sosa. So both teams struggling offensively to start. That continues as Sosa was too strong. Clark wide open. Making shots an issue. <laughs> Those guys have a little trouble staying upright. But he's falling forward to get that forward progress for a first down. Pretty move here. Hillsland missed the bank shot. Samuels the rebound. He's a freshman from Jamaica. Went to high school in New York City. See, that was the first really strong finish after a strong move. You, you mentioned, Bill, pretty moves, and they have been pretty, but the finishes have been pretty too. They need to be harder. Well, that was hard, but a little too harsh on the glass. Both of these teams played Saturday, so it's the quick turnaround. Sosa lost it out of bounds. It'll get turned back over to Notre Dame. Didn't that look like a foul to you? Yeah, they're, they're that letting that foul. initial bump go. And uh, unfortunately, the turnover ensued. Got to attack this pressure, though. If you're going to do anything, it could open up some free shooters. 2-2-1 two, two, in the backcourt going back to the 2-3. They match out of it, but that middle and short corner are both open against it. Aaron Goody nicely done from just inside the arc. First field goal for the Irish, and it's enough to have Rick Patino asking for a timeout. That's what he's improved at stepping away and knocking the jumper down. We're tied at four, 16 and a half to go. 
Rick Patino knows job one tonight is to defend Luke Herringote who had his career high 40 points in this building last February in a five point loss to Louisville. Well Herringote just wide open on the back side of this zone when the ball was in the corner just skipped across and the defense has to move while the ball is in the air that they can't wait for the ball to be caught and then move you have to move as the ball moves. Clark from the elbow off a pass in from Smith. Earl Clark the junior from Plainfield New Jersey with his first bucket. Yeah Harry Cody doesn't want to come to that foul line that's wide open at that end and if you step up you'll get somebody hiding on the baseline. Well, whether it's Clark or Williams they are playmakers for this team you get them the ball in the middle of the floor and they're going to be able to turn either make a move or maybe find Samuels along that short corner for an easy basket. Aaron Goody mm. scores over Samardo Samuels. Great patience in the post. I mean, yeah, and Rick Pitino was saying that's part of the problem. That you try to double and you really can't because he finds good shooters who are wide open. Samardo Samuels scores over Heron Goody at the other end. Well, he's so clever, Heron Goody, with his release. He knows how to freeze the defender. Had some room, Jeez. and he doesn't need much time. Gets rid of it very quickly. He has six. Off and running again, Luke Herringote, who comes in having scored 20 or more in the last eight games for Notre Dame, the longest such streak of his career. Now Mike Bray likes these numbers, though. They, they're going to rev it up, and I think it's tough for Louisville to match the numbers. They're not that good a shooting team. Herringote is going to have to play a little further up the line in the middle of that zone because Samuels is able to jump right in front of him and get position he's going to start locking him down in there. Now Luke is like you though he doesn't want to get in foul trouble. <laughs> Jackson stepped on the end line second Notre Dame turnover. We're tied at eight at the first media timeout. When we come back you won't want to miss this set the DVR. Jay Billis <laughs> with Luke Marangoni on his quick release. Bill now Luke knows how we feel since Jay let him speak for about five percent of that piece. He looked riveted though, didn't he look? Didn't he look like he was really enjoying that? You know what I think he was saying? I went to Notre Dame to listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> Reigning conference player of the year, and as we mentioned, the only one ever to lead the Big East in scoring and rebounding besides his fellow fighting Irish player Troy Murphy, Samardo Samuels. Co preseason rookie of the year with a dunk, and then he has the takeaway of the sloppy pass. Smith makes it hurt. These are the spurts that concern you. Samardo attacking the rim, get the pressure set up, turnover. They could use that from Jerry Smith, one of the best three point shooters in school history, but 0 for his last eight over the last two games. Matter of fact, Louisville won at Villanova Saturday despite the fact they went three for 25 as a team from three. And Jay, I just love the attacking mode of Samardo when it gets the pressure set up. But when they get the ball inside to Terrence Williams, he's such a good passer, draws the defense in, then kicks it out to an open shooter, Jerry Smith. This Louisville team, very good at finding three point shooters. And when they have some time and some openings, they are good shooters. Jim Burr has gone to the monitor to make sure Smith's shot was a three. And if it stands, it'll remain 13 to 8 in favor of Louisville. Well, the word the coaches in this conference use about Louisville's defense is disruptive. Mm -hmm. Active, they're long. A guy like Williams helped set up that play by getting his hand on the ball to cause the turnover. And, and Sean, in 14 games, they had 16 runs of eight zip. And that's the danger. They can blow you right out. Certainly, to certainly look like it before the game. One of the Notre Dame coaches says, as they scout, Louisville has more of their shots from three point range than any other team in the Big East. Notre Dame makes the most threes, more than nine per game, but Louisville is second. They make just under eight threes per game. McElarney long from three. Ayers hustle to save it. And then Heron Goody was fouled on the arm by Smith. And that's two quick fouls on Jerry Smith, the junior from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Tomorrow night on ESPN, Super Tuesdays begin with a doubleheader. First at 7 Eastern, it's a Big Ten battle, Ohio State and Indiana. Then at 9, the SEC showdown between Kentucky and Tennessee. Super Tuesday tomorrow. Sosa for three. 
Samuels active again inside. And finally, it's controlled by Luke Zeller. The first sub off the Notre Dame bench and a foul on Louisville to the chagrin of the packed house. And what a nice confidence Zeller has played with this year. I think he took that open jumper and then active on the rebounding. Tory Jackson in there, the point guard really fighting for that ball as well. And he goes to the offensive glass, too. 5'11", huh? Something that jumped out to Rick Pitino. Ball was on Clark, his first. The two substitutes are in the game now for Notre Dame. Jonathan Peoples and Luke Zeller. Notre Dame used only seven players in their home game Saturday to beat Seton Hall. A lot of minutes run up by those seven. Heron Goldie the miss. Well, he was dragged by the arm and now no call on that. Look at this inside post position. He's getting position every time down. He's just jumping right in front of him. They're going to have to stop it. They just got tangled up. Bobby Donato's going to talk to both players. Samuel's got to calm down. And Luke as well. And Notre Dame has called a timeout. Samardo Samuels with great effort on the offensive glass, and Louisville's opened up a seven-point lead. Aaron Goody just backing down Samuels now. He gets fouled there by Edgar Sosa, but he's so strong, he goes right up with it, and the officials didn't see it. How about this tanglement, though? Some pressure, the great post-up. You got to deny in there. Watch this after, though, as both of them get tangled up. Going back, that little elbow, a little welcome to Louisville. A great second effort by Samardo Samuels. Rick Pitino has been talking with the freshman about playing stronger, going up stronger, trying to be an above the rim player. And he really went right into the strong Luke Herringote on that possession. Did you see this show right in front of us? They just slapped hands, Samuels and Herringote, just to calm down a little bit. But you've got to play better post defense if you're Herringote. Well, this kid is powerful at the rim, Samuels. Well, that's what we were talking about before. You got to play him up the line yep. and meet him at the free throw line when he's coming down the floor and deny him that position. Preston Knowles in now for Louisville. He's a tenacious defender and he's on Jackson right now. I think Notre Dame can run their man to man sets against this 2 3 matchup. It's matching up. You might as well run man stuff against it. Jonathan Peoples, Samardo Samuels came over to alter the shot. Shot clock at two. Aaron go to a miss. And they call the shot clock violation. And the Louisville had the ball and throw the way up the floor. Tell you what, you better go in hard in both ends of the floor. They're, they're letting them play. It's very physical. And this should really benefit Samuels and Aaron Goody. Samuels fouled out in 27 minutes Saturday against Villanova. Looked to be tired down the stretch. 7-0 run right now for Louisville. Some tough matchups for Notre Dame right now, man. Slapped it. They're going to count it. I think he slapped the backboard. I'm not so sure he got the ball on that teller. No argument from Mike Bray on the basket interference. Now they are just loading up in the lane, whether it's Williams or Samuels. Touch the net. Yeah, touch the net. The ball in yep. the cylinder. Credit right the bucket for Terrence Williams, the senior, averaging over 11 and a half points and nine rebounds per game. Now they didn't get a turnover, Louisville, but one of the philosophies of Bettino is taking the legs away from the guards. Trying to wear them down over the course of a game, but Notre Dame's got to present themselves as receivers. Brian Ayers ends the run with a three. His first points of the ball game. He had a big game here last year. It's 17 points for Mike Bray. That skip pass can be so effective. Clark a little too strong off the glass, and Luke Zeller the rebound, and they're looking for more of that. Tough rebounding defensively from Luke Zeller. They're really getting up on McElroy. He's got to use ball fakes and the dribble. Tough shot. And Heron Goatee. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a great feel for the game. He knows where the openings are. I mean, you wouldn't teach a kid that as a post move. But he's just got a feel of the right shot to take. And great confidence, too, which is one of the things Bray instills with all his players. And good hands on defense by Heron Goatee. He looks a little winded as they head the other way, and he's in a trot. Until he gets the ball. Yeah. 
He made three threes last year here against Louisville, and there's another <laughs> awkward-looking release that goes. He has 10 already in less than half of the first half. Would you call that a half a flipper? That was the flipper. I thought he was referring to you with that. <laughs> Clark from the free throw line. Four for Earl, averaging 14 points and nine rebounds per game. Well, the defense has given him confidence, though, offensively. Charge at the end here. McElarney got a jump stop. First foul on Kyle McElarney and a timeout. When we come back, the countdown, the top 30 moments of the last 30 seasons begins. Tune in tonight at 9 Eastern on ESPN during the Texas-Oklahoma game that follows us. You'll see number 29. We'll reveal the number one play of the last 30 years on March 15th during the ACC championship. I got to tell you, you know, that was a nice moment and everything, but that was number 30? Who picked that? Dick? Dick, yeah. <laughs> He's got 29 more with him in it. <laughs> that was a pretty darn good dunk, though. Oh, was that incredible? I was in the building that night, and that did rock the house. And Aaron Gody now just trapped again. He's got to keep him out of the box and get some raking help from the top. Samuels double teamed by Aaron Gody and Ayers. And here's Torrey Jackson the other way now for Notre Dame, coming off a great effort against Seton Hall. Torrey at 18 points, eight assists, seven rebounds. McElroy's got to keep active, use that pump fake when he gets it outside. Look at this fadeaway again. Wow. Is he confident, huh? <laughs> there wasn't much, much of an option there because Preston Knowles was all over Kyle McElroy. Great. <laughs> this is what. It is. Cutting does for you. Clark on the money with the dive, Jay, and a great look. That was a pretty and hard cut and a really nice look to the inside by Samardo Samuels. He can pass it. He's a willing passer. He's just got to learn how to do it. And that time he just didn't have enough pressure on him. Earl Clark couldn't finish the three-point play, but they got the offensive rebound, and then Andre McGee just off the bench. Missed the three. Reginald Delk had the offensive rebound. He's also in for Louisville, the nephew of Tony Delk, who starred for Rick Pitino at Kentucky. McElarney's miss pulled down by Clark. Right. McElarney struggles against Louisville. It has his whole career. Well, they make him put it on the floor. He is not as dangerous. He's got to use screens to get the puppy set. Preston Knowles missed the three at the offensive end for Louisville. Active defense. Great denial for McElarney. Yeah, Knowles just says let him have it. And Samuels a hard bump as he clanged into Heron Goaty. He will learn that. Uh, 30 seconds of really good defense, and he just has to stay big. Look where Heron Goaty catches it. Don't reach, stay big, make him shoot over the top. First foul on Samuels. Five team fouls on Louisville. Under nine minutes to go in the first half. The Cardinals trying to go to 3 0 for the first time ever in four years in the Big East. Now with a one point lead after the second three of the game from the senior Ryan Ayers. Nice inside. That short corner is a great place to get the ball. It collapses that defense. And he can look out and get an open three. Not a good entry. And Heron Gody impressive again on the defensive end as he flicked that pass away. And I love the way he runs the floor and gets himself in position. Backing in on Samuels, the high fading floaters and air ball that time. McGee the push. Delt, who transferred in from Mississippi State, sat out last year. Torrey Jackson the rebound. He's one on two. Going to try it anyway. Uh, he is confident. There's a toughness about that kid, isn't it? Well, th Mike Bray has said he's the toughest player mentally and physically. He's been around in his 25 years Ooh. of coaching. But that was just a great hesitation move followed by a really strong move to the hole. I think when you're one of 14 kids, you have to have a certain amount of toughness. And Torrey Jackson has it. I think you've got to impose your will at dinner, don't you? <laughs> Knowles rattles home a three for Louisville. Uh, he McGee come in and give a boost to this team, usually on the defensive end. Not a good gamble by Clark. He got five on four now. 
McElroy, he had it stuffed right back in his face by Dell. Jackson, a deep three. And that's all because of a gamble by Clark in the backcourt. You pay for those situations. A pretty good presence of mind by McElroy to toss that ball back out to an open Tory Jackson. Third three of the half for Notre Dame. They average over nine per game. They shoot 41% from the arc. And they battled back from an early deficit, a one point lead for the Irish with just over seven to go in the half. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Bud Light. The Irish, thank you. Good luck to Tony Dungy, one of the all time great guys, Hall of Fame good guy, and I'm happy for Jim Rice. I thought he has deserved it for many a year, and finally his day has come. Sosa off the inbounding play, missed the three, slapped around, retrieved by Williams. Well, you can't relax with the basketball around Louisville. Protect it. And that was Preston Knowles. He is a great defender that gives 100% on every possession. Williams for three. He has seven points. He's not bashful, even though he's a 30% career three point shooter. He's made 156 threes, eight all time at Louisville. And the Irish turn it over again. That's where Louisville can really get you. They get you moving too fast, and they've got that backflow pressure. They try to back tip, knock it away, and it forces you to try to make a play on the run, which usually you don't practice. And Mike tried to get Tory Jackson a little bit of a blow on that particular play and paid for it. Notre Dame averages only nine and a half turnovers per game. They've had six already. Aaron Goody fighting a little bit better. That's where they need to get it. They'll score all night wow. long. If you get it to Earl Clark or Terrence Williams, right where it says Big East in the middle of that red lane, forget it. They will go to work either scoring or finding open people along that short corner or in the corner. Nine points now for Terrence Williams. And the lead four for Louisville as we approach six minutes left in the first half. Hillsland is back in for Notre Dame. McElarney trying to heat up, and there's a three for Kyle McElarney, the senior from Staten Island, New York, his first points. And that's one of those little screens, nuisance screens, just to free him up, and maybe that opens him up now. And you can always screen the zone. That is a smart and good play, and Ryan Ayers did a great job of freeing up McElarney. Will Scott, three point specialist off the bench with a miss. He hasn't had much playing time this year. Scott had played in only eight of their first 14 games. He's off the bench along with the freshman Jared Swapshot. Got to stay at home on him. And McElroy's got to be busy. They got to protect it. Williams one on one. Offensive now a carry. Looked like Jim Bird was going to call a charge, but instead he got a carry against Williams for the fifth Louisville turnover of the half. Uh, Hillsman really struggling, not protecting the basketball. He's much better than this. He is not played up to his standard. And that really limits the bench now. He's yes. gone right back to the bench with Zeller back in. Zeller walks. Now, I'm not so sure McElarney should have given that up, Sean. Take it himself. This week, Wednesday night hoops, two ACC schools battle Kyle Singler, and now number two, Duke, take on the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Wednesday night hoops presented by Disney Parks on ESPN, 7 Eastern Time. And Gerald Henderson went crazy on Saturday against Florida State at 25, and he was up in the air for most of that game. Knowles missed a three. Heron Goaty the rebound. Notre Dame with a chance to take the lead after the fourth board of the ball game from Heron Goaty. Pressure from Louisville has really affected Notre Dame's offense. Now, this is where they get that single double for him. He found Zeller who rattles one home. Notre Dame back up by one. Playing within yourself. McElroy, he didn't force it. Williams missed the three. Zeller in traffic hit the deck and a call for a walk. He's a different player, isn't he, this year? Well, Luke Zeller came in with high expectations. Mr. Basketball in Indiana, McDonald's All-American. Looked like they caught the Irish napping there, and Clark from close range. Wow. Too easy. Well, they don't protect the basket here. And Zeller has it swatted by Samuels. Knowles 
well short with a three as Jackson ran out to defend. And Notre Dame hasn't taken advantage of those corner jumpers with runouts. They can get some easy baskets. And Notre Dame has been turning the ball over. They've had some shots sent back at them, and they're just one point down. McElarty, Heron Goldie decided to get closer. He thought he was fouled by Samuels and might have deflected the shot. Williams collides with Zeller. Block the call, and they're going to count the basket. Now the ability to go the other way after a block shot. Louisville sets up the press. Unfortunately, a timeout. <laughs> well, Reese, we're all about matching our pens to our clothes. I mean, mm -hmm. it took me forever to pick out this pen that matched my uh, my suit. And I know Digger spends a lot of time, you know, instead of preparing for the games, you know, messing with his pen. Well, you never deal harshly with an artist. There's a reason that he thinks differently than the rest of us. <laughs> I did not know he's an artist. Yeah, well, just because nobody knows what you're talking about and doesn't understand you doesn't mean you're an artist. Well, I was asked back to his home to look at his etchings. Oh. <laughs> and let me tell you, that's the last time that'll happen. Williams, the free throw to cap the three-point play. Louisville brings the pressure. And Notre Dame handles it well. Excuse me, Sean. Did Jay Rader mention off-air? They're playing too fast Notre Dame. McElarney, a deep three. Rick Pitino was asked about McElarney. He said we need to guard him when he gets off the bus. We're going to pick him up as soon as he comes off the steps of the bus. He has incredibly deep range as he demonstrated there. He has six. It's a one point game. At that time Notre Dame took their time. The nice diagonal pass against the pressure. And there wasn't a rush to move it up court. Williams spins missed a finger roll his version of a flipper. McGee, boy, their three-point shooting has been miserable the last couple of ball games. Out of bounds to Louisville. Well, Notre Dame's got to get more people helping on the glass. There are too many second efforts right now. Now Louisville may not be a great shooting team, but they can improve their shooting with the sh shot selection. Like that just wasn't a very good shot. Whoa! Oh, to the bucket. Oh! Hey, Clark! I think they listened to Jay on shot selection. That was a pretty good one. Zeller from the elbow a miss. Williams with the crowd fully engaged. Blocked by Ayers, plucked out of the air by Zeller. Pretty good defensive response by ND. Two minutes to go in the half. Louisville by three. Jackson guarded by Sosa. It's Jackson, McElarney, Ayers, Zeller, and Heron Goaty. Heron Goaty hasn't been as involved lately in the offensive end, but he tipped the miss back up and in. 14 for Heron Goaty. See, somebody needs to call a timeout now. Not strategically. I want to see that replay, Earl Clark dunking on the whole building. <laughs> that was unbelievable. It was incredible. Honestly, that kid could do so many things. Another three for Williams. He's had 15 in the half. Boy, when he's knocking shots down, he does absolutely everything. Can pass it. Great nice. defender. McElarney shed the first defender with the fake. Got free for an open look, and he has nine on three threes. And that was all Zeller making a cut out to the wing. They got out of sorts in their matchup, and that little pump fake, he gets people a bite. That's why you don't want to leave McElhaney and certainly don't want to leave your feet on him. If you could leave your feet, as you've made the play several <laughs> times. Now that's McGee. a good shot. Didn't make it, but it was a good shot. They get the loose balls. That's what makes them so good. And they're getting a lot of the long rebounds off the three-point misses. McElhaney. Sloppy reach-in foul. Second foul on Kyle McElarney. How about that one? May I? Oh, that is just incredible. Like coming back at you, too. Send it in. Ooh. Raising the bar by Clark. 
Well, Stackhouse's play was number 30. Was that 30A? That's 29. <laughs> How about Somebody's got to get bumped out of there. I can't get over going left and then coming oh. back right at the crew cut. Shot clock is off. Louisville will hold for the last shot of the half. Sosa likes to just freeze and shoot it if they don't give him that high five screen. Get it to Clark in the middle. Rick Pitino held up five fingers when Sosa looked at him. Sosa used the Clark screen, hits the runner. And a long court heave by Jackson will not be into the bucket. Aaron Goody was terrific, but Williams was a little bit better. And at the half, Louisville leads 41-38. Let's send you back to the studio now and join Reese and Digger for the UPS halftime report. All right, Sean Sweep. Break Louisville with a three-point lead over Notre Dame. The big edge was inside in the first half for Louisville. They had 24 points in the paint. Points in the paint were 24 to 6. And Notre Dame, which averages just over nine turnovers per game, had nine in the first half. It was the full court pressure of Louisville, and Louisville was efficient at scoring the ball. Louisville shot 52% on two point shots. The only ones they missed were threes, and Samardo Samuels getting the ball inside. I thought Terrence Williams was magnificent in the first half. Not just good, Bill, but magnificent. And how about this one? A little tattoo in your forehead. That is extraordinary. I thought he was going to throw a little lefty hook. Uh, the complete finish. Now, what would that suggest to you, coach? Would you stop shooting threes if you were Louisville? I would be a little bit more judicious about shooting threes and make sure I get the ball into the middle of the floor and let my playmakers, especially Terrence Williams, touch it and make a play. Second half underway, Notre Dame's ball. And it opens with a three out of the corner for Kyle McElarney. 12 points. On four threes from Akalarni. Notre Dame shooting beautifully from beyond the arc. Now seven out of ten. The reason they're even with Louisville. And I would think a oh, nice little pad. Gotta squeeze it. Oh. He was, he was thinking about his next move. He's been thinking about going up strong, and he just made a mistake and not caught it. Look at this footwork. Aaron Cody, strong hands after. Williams tried to rip it away. Good start to the half for Notre Dame. 16 points for Heron Goaty. And this is the largest lead of the game for Notre Dame. Their biggest lead in the first half was one. Louisville led by nine. And Aaron Goaty, not any fouls. He's going to become tougher. And they're going to say on the back, Hillsland. No, I think they got Goaty up front. Do you? Yeah, Goaty brought those arms down. But pretty good patience in the post here. Nice up fake and sticks with it. That's one thing that he does really well is sticks with it. Aaron Goaty called for the foul. His first. That got a mock cheer from the crowd. The officials certainly let them play in the first half. A total of nine fouls called in the half. Samuels missed the first free throw. And if you've uh, seen enough of Patino, making a free throw is important because you set up the pressure. Play Smarto Samuels. Is, he missed that. He's going to be a good player. Rick Patino wants him to start playing above the rim. He thinks he can be a little bit like Elton Brand. He doesn't run the floor nearly as well as Brand did, but he's got a lot of the same qualities. Do me a favor when you get him at a skills camp, don't teach him free throw shooting. <laughs> I want to see him improve. Good. He's over 71 percent for the year, though you wouldn't have known it by looking at that second release a moment ago. Heron Goaty sticking with it. Heron Goaty scores for Notre Dame. And aptly put, Sean. That's that kid's game. Just stick to it of this. Boy, a veteran response in the second half by Notre Dame. They came out like a bunch of older players. Aaron Goody is 18, two away from his ninth straight game with 20 or more. Duke, Georgia Tech, and Lakers Spurs, Wednesday on ESPN. Susan first came to us with a problem booking vacations. She'd be one click away when her fear that the price would drop left her paralyzed. So we started her treatment with Orbit's price assurance to create a safe booking environment. Ah, the joy on Susan's face when she booked that trip. This is important stuff we're doing. Orbit's price assurance. If another customer books the same flight for less, we'll automatically send you the difference in cash. That's one latte. Keep the change. Whoa, you can use that change to get double the beef for only 89 cents. Double the beef. 
SEC teams in the top 25 in the history of the USA Today ESPN poll, which goes back to 1997-98, first time that's ever happened. Well, it's stunning. I mean, at one, it's stunning that Arkansas didn't get in the poll after they had beaten both Texas and uh, Oklahoma, but that is stunning that there are no teams in the SEC win. That is not stunning because that's his game. He doesn't put it on the deck extremely well. Smith able to convert from deep. Fifth three-pointer of the game for Louisville. And two minutes into the second half, it's a one-point lead for Notre Dame. McElarney from downtown. <laughs> that little screen, I think the defense had no idea he would jack it up. You've got to be alert against this kid. Well, who would think that? No, I don't. You just don't see that. Louisville led by three at the half. They haven't lost this year. Win leading at the break. They're 11 and 0. Clark a miss, but it got kept alive by Terrence Jennings, who's in off the bench. And Smith starting to feel it now for three. And that's the one guy that can ring the bell. I would hug him. Don't leave him. They handle the pressure. To the Irish and it's Heron Goldie. That's nine straight games now with 20 points or more for Heron Goldie. First Notre Dame player to do that since Adrian Dantley back in 1975-76. Williams a miss and Hillsland the rebound. And Sean Hillsland on that last pass. That's what he's got to do. Handle the break. Give him a third ball handler against this pressure. Jackson did a great job keeping his dribble. And his shot blocked out of bounds. Jennings has been more of a factor in recent days, although he hasn't played much tonight. Rick Patino used 11 players in the first half, while three Notre Dame players played the entire first 20 minutes. Ooh, oh, nice what play. a play! <laughs> Williams on the receiving end, and he earned it. Just great old fashioned basketball at the end that two on one after a magnificent interception by Williams. An athletic play defensively and offensively. Shot clock at five. Torrey Jackson cannot quiet the crowd. Karen Goody hit the deck. And Louisville has a five on four for the moment. Earl Clark for three. And Heron Goody got back into the play to get the rebound. He does work. I mean, that's pretty good effort. But a big fella. Ryan Ayers, a quick three. Very smooth for Ryan Ayers. His third three of the ball game. And Hillsham once again provides the screen to free the terrific shooter from deep. Well, some guys just like shooting in certain buildings. Andre McGee, the response. You have to think this is one of Ryan Ayer's favorite buildings to shoot in. Five out of six from three point range here last year. Three out of four tonight. Hey, Sean and Jay, I'm amazed how Louisville recovers when they press. Because I thought Notre Dame would get some open looks against the pressure. McElarney, nice pass inside. Hillsland fouled in a chance for three. They need him. He's very important for this basketball team. So many things he can do to contribute. And speaking of contributions, a guy that can fill that paper up. How about that effort? A little old time religion here. Give it back. Woo! Send it in. January 23rd. I read about him get appeared. You can journey to a world where fantasy becomes reality. And adventure lives on every page. In part, rated PG. Welcome aboard flight 1120. There are six exits on this plane. Two exits on each side. And two window exits over the wing. Do you fasten your seatbelt. Alter the flat metal tab until the buckle until it locks securely to tighten. Pull the strap. A water evacuation. Unlikely. But just in case your seat cushion may also be used as a flotation device. It's our pleasure to have you aboard. From all of us. Thank you, you for, flying. for flying. Business travel without the travel. That's the human network effect. Cisco Telepresence. Welcome to the human network. First of all, I want to thank everyone for coming out here today. 
Um, after having a long discussion with friends and family, I've decided to follow my first love. Get a free dessert to celebrate Papa John's 25th anniversary. Get the 25th anniversary sweet deal and receive an order of chocolate pastry delights free with the purchase of a large one-topping pizza for only $11.99. 25 years of better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. At zero price, successful investing is about balancing risk and reward intelligently. It's the same way we've managed investments for over 70 years. Finding the right opportunity. Low-cost mutual funds from T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Request a complete prospectus or profile with investment objectives, risks, fees, expenses, and other information to read and consider carefully before investing. He's sweet. I didn't know it was your sister. If I did, then I, I wouldn't have had sex with her. He's sexy. And he's supportive. Hello? Yeah, I can talk. Dane Cook, Kate Hudson, Jason Biggs, and Alec Baldwin. My best friend's girl. Own it on unrated Blu-ray and DVD January 13th. Tom McDonough, Jay Billis, Bill Raftery. Welcome back to the first big Monday of the season. And we're happy you're with us tonight because, quite frankly, we're embarrassed with the lineup we're going to roll out for the rest of these big Mondays. <laughs> How about those matchups? Unbelievable. Every team but one just right now uh, ranked. And West Virginia was ranked last week. They just fell out of the top 25 this week after losing to Marquette, which is no disgrace. Marquette is a perfect 4 0 in Big East play right now. We'll see them. In two weeks at Notre Dame. They're sneaking around. Not too many people talking about them. Well, Marquette, great backcourt. Lazar Hayward, an absolutely a extraordinary performer as well. Hillsland couldn't finish the three point play. Notre Dame by three. 15 minutes to go here at Sold Out Freedom Hall. More than 19,000 on hand. Every game of the Rick Patino air has been sold out here. And so right now, that straight up man. They're going to be doing a better job. They're going to get the hold on him, though. Number two. Yes, indeed. They're trying to feed Samuel. Second foul on Heron Goldy. Wednesday night, two ACC schools battle on Wednesday night hoops presented by Disney Parks. Kyle Singler and second ranked Duke taking on Georgia Tech. Of course, the stunning development in the ACC is that North Carolina is now 0 and 2 in conference with their loss in a great game against Wake last night. That will not last forever but boy what a terrific game by Wake. One of only three remaining undefeated teams in the country is Wake. Jerry Smith has a three pop out Earl Clark kept it alive for Williams. Andre McGee for three. Wow. Hustling and scraping that's what they're best at. Well, Jim Burr almost got in the way of the cross court pass. The Notre Dame team got it over with about a second to go. Peoples out of control lost the ball. Well, you were talking about being uptick, too much speed, and that's a case in point. That's what that press does, Jay. Well, that's what they want to do is get you moving at a speed that you don't practice. And Peoples does not practice bringing the ball up at that level of speed and turned it over as a result. I'll tell you what, Terrence Williams is playing great and he is by far the best passer on this team. He made two passes worth even assist on that last possession. Yeah, nice help out there by Ayers. They just don't cover. Beautiful basketball from the top from Clark. No pressure on him up top so he's able to make that pass. And plenty of pressure in the backcourt brought by Louisville and McGee's going to get called for a little bump. A lot of work goes into that high low situation and Samuel sets his man up beautifully and then the dump down that's just good basketball Ayers had left to cover the corner couldn't recover. Well what it is is a recognition that your post guy is always open if he's defended a certain way with the ball in the wing pass it to the top of the key and he can hold that seal and you can throw it into him that way. Colin McGee was his first. He's guarding Jackson only two team fouls on each team here in the second half the officials continue to let them play. Good job by Jerry Smith right up on McElarney and the crowd recognizes him. And they had run a set play to get him free. And now some contact in the low block. Samuels and Heron Goldie renewing their acquaintance and 
The foul is on Samardo Samuels, his third. And that McElarney was either coming up top of that America's play or going the other way. And great coverage. Just a really nice job by Jerry Smith to lock in trail. And he was there on the catch. He had a sense of urgency, and that's what you need as a defender. Aaron Gody. A long two. Jim Burr and Bob Donato looked at each other, agreed it was a two pointer. 22 now for Heron Gody. He's two for six from three, so he can bring Jennings away from the rim. That middle is open. And now they're into a little matchup. The Clark in the middle is where they want to go. Jennings inside scores. Louisville by two on the first bucket for Terrence Jennings, the freshman from Sacramento. Well, if you're not going to cover the baseline guy, you better not let the ball come to the high post. Heron Gody wants more. He's fouled. Second foul on Earl Clark. Louisville's attack of the zone. You get it into the middle. Heron Goaty's got to come up. And you can see there's too much space to cover for Ryan Ayers. And Jennings able to lock down and get an easy basket. A terrific pass by Earl Clark. It was an outstanding pass. Notre Dame struggled to get it in. For the pressure tenacious. You wonder about fatigue for this Notre Dame team. It's not deep. Jackson, tough runner, very well defended, plucked out of the air by Jennings. That's that defense up and at you, and he's screening pop they've covered and ragging the dribbler. Williams, great move, and the finger roll, and he has 19 points. And he has been the best player on the floor. He's doing it in every way you can on a basketball court. 19 points, seven rebounds, six assists for Terrence Williams. And a couple of steals. Great decision maker. Knows what shot to take, when to give it up. How about this footwork, Jay? Just a great little step through. Ayers over pursued and he used it against him. That was outstanding by Terrence Williams. Florida night Super Tuesday, a doubleheader, 7 Eastern, the Big Ten matchup, Ohio State and Indiana. And then at 9, the SEC showdown, Kentucky and Tennessee, Super Tuesday, presented by KFC on ESPN. So Terrence Williams had an up and down career here. He certainly, as you guys have pointed out, can contribute in so many areas. But he had the tendency to have his mood go up and down. And Rick Patino said, I want you to act like a guy who's been offered a TV ad, you know, like a sneaker ad, but they want you because you have that bubbly, likable personality all the time. Was he talking to Williams or you? Yeah, He's I was going to say, can you, can you imagine that too? <laughs> and uh, Terrence Williams, from all reports, has been a consistently cheerful, upbeat. That message resonated with him. And they've been rotating defenders on McElarney in a beautiful fashion. Oh, nice. And Zeller cannot quiet the crowd. Here comes McGee. Louisville with the ball, a four point lead. Preston Knowles. Terrence Williams for three. <laughs> Season high 22 for Williams. He had 21 against UAB. How can you get up in this league? Saturday, you had Villanova. I mean, they just keep coming at you. This is an outstanding performance. Jennings swatted Harry Goody's hook. Zeller the miss. Jennings way up to pull it down. Louisville on the run. Knowles to bring down the house. Rebound Jackson. Big trip, I think, here for the Notre Dame for the Irish. And they go to the right place. That's Aaron Gody blocked by Jennings. And then he might have hit Zeller with an inadvertent elbow. McGee powered into the lane. Aaron Gody the rebound. Last two trips, I think they've been a little quick, Louisville. Trying to put them away quickly. And McElarney had Knowles on his hip, and Knowles got called for his first foul on the team's fifth. <laughs> 
Terrence Williams has been the best player on the floor most of the night tonight, and he is feeling it from three. I am so sorry if... Don't worry, it happens. What do you got there? Heated steering wheel? No. Yeah. Is that a manicure? <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather have a Dodge Ram with a heated steering wheel or a Silverado with an EPA estimated 21 highway? Unbeatable fuel economy, unbeatable value. Chevy Silverado, America's best truck. Today through January 17th, get a free week of the most college hoops in the nation on ESPN Full Court. Bring home the excitement with top teams, UConn, Florida, Oklahoma, and Syracuse. Plus even more great matchups with up to 30 games per week from outside your local area. A free week of ESPN Full Court continues today. Call your pay-per-view provider for local listings. Games also available on ESPN360.com. ASD Occluder Devices. Terrence Williams looks good tonight. He has been sparkling from every angle in transition and defensively he's been terrific. He's made some athletic plays. He's played under control and that's just a beautiful step for a move. He's a great all-around player. I mean he's not one thing he does in a super fashion but the combination is extraordinary. Well he's a playmaking forward. You can see I mean that is just filling up a statue. The only player in the country who averages at least 10 points, eight rebounds, and four assists per game. McElarney, the floater. Nice shot for McElarney, the rare two. He is 17. And a great little call out of the timeout. Get the two best players involved on the side and that hesitation delivery. Notre Dame and man to man. You just have to stay in front, make Louisville shoot over, and limit them to one shot. Midway through the second half, a five point lead for Louisville. Jennings, too strong. Rebound Ayers. Well, Jennings has a terrific body and really gets up off the floor efficiently and quickly. McElarney played the full 40 minutes each of their last three games. He played all 20 in the first half. Crowd thought it was off his leg. The officials say no. Not great looking for a little nickel dimer on the side there. I thought that went off McElarney. It, it did. did, but uh, a little slap from the rear, too. Ten seconds to shoot. Kickback. Oh, How about Jackson this? found a hole. Uh, the big lift of the big fella opened up the lane. Jennings nowhere to be seen. He's like a running back. He thought he was going to throw that ball back after mm -hmm. the flat screen, but got all the way to the rim. Williams too strong with the bank. Then he went in and tried to slap it away from Heron Goldie. So here's Notre Dame again, a three pointer to tie. That's a double double for Heron Goldie with his 10th oh. rebound. <laughs> McElarney the layup. A raining kiss delivery. Yeah, oh, more. In Staten Island, he's got the Brad Pitt look and the attractive release around the rim. This is a play that Notre Dame runs called flat. It's a little flat screen that's parallel to the backboard right here. And a nice hesitation move and looked like he lost the ball but then got all the way to the rim. Earl Clark needed to come in there a little bit stronger defensively. And Jay, how about the combo of the two? Look at this one, high off the forehead, a little smooch from heaven. Well, he's done two of those to loosen it up. He had trouble getting free. Mike's not running screens for him. A big difference you mentioned earlier, Jay McElhinney struggled here last year. He was three for 14 in this building last year. One out of eight from three. Much different story tonight. Five out of six from beyond the arc. Notre Dame with nine three-pointers tonight. Nine out of 14. They've done it from outside. Louisville most of its damage inside. And it's a one point game just another night in the Big East. Now Sosa on the floor play within himself a little screen and a, and a shape up. Look at Harry Goody's footwork Sean. And he has really improved his footwork. Toned up the body over the years. The banker goes for Edgar Sosa. Six for Edgar. They have to have him playing well to be the team that they can be. 
as we head down the stretch in this season. Aaron Goldie for the moment one on one with the freshman Samuels who forced him away from the bucket. Well, that's not a problem for Heron Goatee. Oh, elementary post up 101. Sticking it to him. 24 points for Heron Goatee. 10 rebounds. His wow. eighth double double in the last nine. And then he committed a foul. He didn't agree with the call. He did prevent the dunk from Samuels. But it's a concern now for Mike Bray. Three fouls on Heron Goatee. Not doing his homework early, getting pinned, and a terrific entry to the proper hand. Little sellout here leads to the goal. Not good D, but a big fella. It's about every game. He's grabbing 16, 17, 18 rebounds. I don't think there's any one player in America that can guard him one on one. And Fran talking about defense. You've seen his teams. All they did was <laughs> hit up and down. Oh. Just tease you, Fran. Fran, you'll have his turn for rebuttal when we're here together Saturday. That's right. Uh, looking forward to seeing him too. Yeah, we have Pittsburgh at Louisville Saturday night. I think she'll join Bill Raftery and me. It's Jay's home counting his money. Nice play. This kid is active as you said Jay. Sam has a certain toughness about him. And look at the matchup. Speaking of tough. Yeah, Jackson's got one arm around Samuel's leg. They let him hold him for a while like that. And finally, Carl Hess calls the foul on Jackson. First foul on Tory Jackson. And he knew, too, that he only had the one. But how about that presentation? Those are fast break igniters. And then take advantage of size. A lot of teams don't read that. Earl Clark wants his own shot. Heron Goody got a hand in. And now Jackson with a chance to tie it. And he does with the layup at 67 apiece, under seven and a half to go. Boy, what a nice play by Zach Hillsland to Just tip that it. ball out. You didn't see that. That was interesting. Williams. Oh. Got his own miss and then falling down. Missed the shot. Do you think on that possession, Clark seemed determined he was going to take a shot, and that time Williams seemed determined? Yes. I tell you that he wanted that rebound more than anybody. Athletic rebound. Jackson back for Heron Goaty. He knew it. He had started toward the other end as that ball was in midair. Anytime there's a drive, Notre Dame does a really good job of filling in behind mm -hmm. so that they can throw back. And that's exactly what Heron Goaty did on that baseline drive. He filled right behind the passer. Luke Heron Goaty now with 26 points. And he's coming in off back to back. 30 point games last week 31 against Georgetown 30 Saturday against Seton Hall. I asked you the question you talk about Blake Griffin of course hands was not bad either but what about Luke Heron go if you had to pick the national player of the year right I, now. I think he'd be right there in the discussion mm -hmm. uh, and I'll tell you who else I'd put in there I would put James Harden of Arizona State in there mm -hmm. as well. I yeah, think he deserves to be right in that right in that mix. You know what I love about this kid he softens you up early around the basket. And then he gets confidence and drifts. And as Jay said, any penetration, he makes himself available because bigs don't want to cover him that far. I talked to an NBA scout this morning who said, in his opinion, Heron Goaty as a pro prospect has moved past Tyler Hansbrough. Mm -hmm. I think he was ahead of him before before now. I mean, as a pro prospect. Although, you know, Hansbrough handed it to him in Maui head to head. Yeah, and, and that's not to say that Tyler won't be a good pro either. I mean, he, he, he's going to go to a team that he's going to learn to be patient and get better. Samuels surrounded, got a shot up, got his own rebound, and it spun off. And Heron Goaty was fouled. Knowles went over the back. But you, Samuels was there too. They might have given it to Samuels. And the one thing about Heron Goaty, he tips to himself beautifully. If he can't elevate, he's got such great strength. He can ward it. Now look at this effort, Jay. I mean, he is rooting the guy and he hangs in tough and gets after it. Well, that's a play that Samardo Samuels later on this year and next year will finish. Right now, he's not really making strong moves when he's got contact inside. And he's gone to the bench with four fouls, five oh, second shit. violation. Good defense by McGee, an outstanding defender as he was up on Jackson. Mike Bray says, hey, that's my fault. And off the ball, Knowles as well with McElarney didn't let him receive it. Key in that sequence. And 
Jackson must be looking for a call from the bench for what they wanted to run and didn't get it. Two point lead Notre Dame under six minutes to go. They'll play twice this regular season. The Big East, there are three opponents. You play twice. Clark. Rebound McElarney. Heron Gody sprinting down the court. He wanted that from Tory Jackson. That's when he's got great speed to get to this position, too. And a nickel dimer over the top. Boy, what, a, what a smart play, though, Bill. Heron Gody didn't have it right away. He kicked it back out, and then he reposted. Mm -hmm. And that's really good post perimeter interaction. After he passed it out to McElarney, he posted up again and gave Jennings the chance to reach over and foul. He's enjoying his ability at this stage of his career, too. He doesn't mind going to these visiting arenas. First foul on Jennings, Louisville over the limit. Heron Goody made the front end of the one and one. First, the question that'll be answered after the season Will Heron Goody choose to have a Tyler Hansbrough type career and come back as a senior with a chance to set a lot of records? You would think Austin Carr's scoring record would be out of reach at Notre Dame, but. Not at the rate at which Heron Goaty's going. Mm -hmm. Cut now because he can find you. Clark. Tough, tough shot. No backboard, that kind of an angle. It's the largest lead of the night for Notre Dame and a chance to build on it. Up by four. They have enough left in the tank. McElarney played 40 Saturday. Heron, Gody, and Jackson played 39, and they've gone just about all the way tonight. A repost there, too. Jackson, the scoop, tipped by Heron, Gody, and corralled by Jennings. Notre Dame sticking with man to man, and it's been very effective. They're laying off, trying to. Help on those back cuts. I mean, Hillsland's got to stay with Williams. He's the conductor for this team. Clark guarded by Zeller. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Clark. Rich reach Foul in. on a reach in. Yep. Mm. And that's the third. On McElarney. And it's the fifth team foul. Timeout, Notre, Dame. Notre Dame asks for a timeout. 30 second timeout. Families for effective autism treatment and will present go cards, the Big East basketball tournament raffle. The Big East, part of our Big Monday doubleheader. The Red River rivalry is next from the Big 12 on Big Monday. Texas and Oklahoma, two teams in the top 11. A great player. And I want to see Sean at midnight say Red River rivalry. <laughs> Well, now the fouls, the whistles are starting to come more frequently. Zeller called for his second. That'll be the sixth team foul on Notre Dame. It'll be bonus time the rest of the way, both ways. Jennings goes out. And Samuels is back in playing with four fouls. Nice screen by the inbound man. Nickel Dimer here. And Harrigody upset it's his fourth, but what a great setup. But they let him play just about all night long, and now here come the whistles, one after another. That one they could have let go, no question about it. And they've let that stuff go most of the night. But you know, Louisville, to its credit, they've been going inside, even though they weren't making shots. Clark had a couple of opportunities in the post-up. Samuels, the fadeaway free throw drops, so that is four fouls on Heron, Gody. Slow down on the delivery of this free throw, says Rick Patino. He also needs to stay on the line. He was backing up before when he released it. If he stays on, goes in. There it is. A little offense, defense kind of a thing. Saving Samuels. So Heron Goody playing with four fouls. Samuels goes back out. Walter McCarty, former NBA player, Kentucky star, now on the Kentucky staff. Great mentor to the young Samuels, both on and off the court. What a man Walter McCarty is. Great guy. Terrific player, becoming a terrific coach, and an outstanding singer as well, I might add. Mills Land try to give Jackson a screen. Heron Goody. Ten to shoot. Jackson, the tough layup. Batted around. It's McGee. 
Two to tie, three for the lead for Louisville. Williams wants the lead. Clark the rebound, then Jackson jumped in there. I thought that was a jump ball there. Got the foul, Sean. It's going against Notre Dame. Timeout, 3.40 to go. Indeed, we will enjoy watching that one, Reese. Notre Dame fighting history here tonight. They haven't defeated Louisville here at Freedom Hall since 1958. And they are one in seven all time against Louisville in this building. They have a win here more recently than that. They beat Kentucky in here in 1980. But since then, they've lost eight games in this building, either to Louisville or others. Uh, Digger will turn that into a discussion about UCLA somehow. <laughs> Here's Clark at the line. Missed the front of a one and one. The last foul was on Jackson. Now Jackson in the scrum. Held ball. It'll go back to Louisville. They are amazing how they can get involved in long rebounds. Anything on the floor. Louisville just pursues it so well. And their individual drills dictate it. They chart it. And they're good at it. Now you wonder going down the stretch the last three and a half minutes of this game whether Louisville's pressure throughout the course of this game has gotten into the legs of guys like Kyle McElarney and Luke Heron Gody and Tory Jackson are they going to have the legs to finish this on the road They're going right at Luke give him a cushion Samuels guarded by Heron Gody both with four fouls Heron Gody had to let him spin and score and it's a tie game, 3.20 to go. Timeout caused by great pressure by the two guys that ignite the full court effort. Somebody's got to dive down there and dig after that ball. They just can't let Samardo Samuels go to work on their big guy when he's got four fouls. He's helpless in there with those four fouls. They've got to dig down and take it, whether it's Hillsland, McElarney, Torrey Jackson. Somebody needed to get in there and dig down on that ball. I would rather give Louisville the outside shot. They've exactly. had a great three-point shooting team. Break down and get involved. And that's probably an adjustment they're going to be making right now. Hey, there's the 86 banner. I hung that banner in here. Yes, you did. <laughs> Everybody welcomed you here. It's unbelievable. Is this, I mean, so you're one of their favorites. Pittsburgh, number one in the country for the second week in a row. Only Pittsburgh, Clemson, and Wake Forest now undefeated. In Division I basketball, the Big East, one fewer team in the top 25 than last week with eight. They lost West Virginia out of the top 25. They fell out. Now, you know, Jay, it's interesting. I think I would let Heron Gody bring it up. It's straight man to man. Let him bring it up and rest the guards, then give it to him. Jennings isn't going to come play him. Heron Gody guarded by Jennings. Tough shot. Tipped around. Controlled by Williams. Three minutes to go. Tie game. Well, Williams has been an absolute man. He has a double double now. That's his 10th rebound. 22 and 10. He's got to be close to that in assists, too. McGee unlucky as his three popped out. Heron go to the board. Now, now why shoot that? You're going at Luke. He's got Clark that he's guarding that particular trip. Let him touch it. McGee ripped it away. Then Jackson got it back. Jackson wanted a timeout, but they have the held ball. And it'll be Notre Dame's ball. McGee does a great job of getting up under the ball handler. Keeps his shoulders lower and reassumes that pressure. After he got the little push off, he reassumed the pressure. That's a really good defender on the ball. And you, to answer you, they looked a little fatigued there. They didn't protect it. Well, Patino uses the word great to describe McGee's defensive skills. And Preston Knowles is doing a great job on McElhinney. He is all over number 23. Uh, he didn't touch it the last couple of trips because of that. Shot clock five. Heron Gody. Very tough fadeaway, and it falls off to Williams. Still tied at 71 with two minutes to go. Well, Jennings back in. That's the matchup for Heron Gody. Jennings not an offensive player right now. Well, even if he just shapes up and they get an entry, we've seen that before. Williams oh. lost it as he tried to drive on Hill's land. Jackson lost it to Knowles after the spin. And there's the backflow pressure coming to try to back tip it 
from behind, and Jackson cannot spin against that pressure. They read it so well, whether it's the lines or the ability of the ball handler. They really pursue that ball from behind and look to tip it away. That's really good defense in the full court by Louisville. Tied at 71 apiece. And it's been that way since 319 remains. So neither team has scored in nearly two minutes. Now this is a very tough shot fade the way we've seen him make them. But he had a stretch back and unfortunately for ND not going and there's your guy another another notch in the belt by Williams. Well that's where Heron Goaty needs to kick it out to an open shooter or at least somebody that can shot fake and drive when he's got double coverage somebody's open that's too tough of a shot in that situation. Now they've done a lot of letting him guard alone as we check out. Uh, trying to come up with you know, I, I think maybe something with the two McElarney and Heron Goaty. They did that earlier on a side screen and roll. Well, I think Louisville's got to go inside to Samuels now. He's going to be back in the ball game, get it to him, and let him go to work. Absolutely. Louisville just used its last timeout. Notre Dame has only one. Both teams are in the bonus. The arrow for Louisville. It's their ball. 133 to go. Boy, it's kind of a tough situation. Heron Goaty finds himself in when with 28. And 13 tonight, that's below average lately. <laughs> <laughs> Kids laying down on the job. If he gets two more points, he'll be the first Notre Dame player to score 30 points or more in three straight games since Adrian Dantley did it in six games. Six. In a that row. A, is that shocking? In 1976, Adrian Dantley, the Hall of Famer. Now, Digger was sick for half of those games, I think. It pales in comparison to Austin Cart, Notre Dame, who played in 74 games in his Notre Dame career over three years and averaged 34.6 for his career. And, and they, they switch his L around him. Good move by Mike Bray. So go to Earl Clark. Yeah, let him go to work. Exactly. Now you can beat him with the dribble. And that's what Clark is trying to do. Then he passed out to McGee and Zeller a big rebound. No big man underneath there for Louisville. Only Knowles trying to hit the offensive glass. More than two minutes since either team has scored as the clock ticks down to one minute remaining in another classic in the Big East. Zeller for three, way short. Hold the string on it. That wasn't the shot. No. They can go two for one here if they can get up something quickly. Knowles to Williams with Clark, Jennings, and McGee for Louisville. Clark driving on Heron go to you backed off Clark tipped it and Hillsland almost threw it too hard to Jackson Notre Dame can take the final shot need a timeout to get set. So neither team has a timeout remaining and Rick Pitino said I wonder about my team's mental and physical fatigue with all of the buzzer feeders lately. Sosa's three gave him the dramatic win over Kentucky when he hit from about 25 feet. Then after a midweek win against South Florida, they went to Villanova, and the Wildcats had three great chances. And that came on the heels of two missed free throws by Villanova with five seconds to go. And Jay Wright walked off with a very hard defeat. He would deal with it better than most coaches we know, talking to him after the game. But you wonder about bounce back ability and in this league these coaches are going to have to deal with that time and time again because there's so many good teams every night is going to be like this. Well and that's what that's what the difficulty is is when you're tired to have to go through these situations. I mean you got 24 seconds left Notre Dame has the ball with the chance to win it at the end and Ryan Ayers back into the ball game. They're going to be able to spread the floor. Maybe they bring up Luke Heron go to right. set that little flat screen and he pops back out. Yeah he, he can pop back out then he's in the middle of the floor. There are a lot of different things that they can do but the floor spread with shooters on the perimeter with McElarney and Ayers is the key. The interesting thing too is you got the option between McElarney and Heron Goody on the same side. They had run it earlier. It was very effective. McElarney will be forced to give it up so he's going to have to get free when they pin him down. First thing is getting the ball inbounds with no timeouts. Ayers, Heron Goaty, McElarney, Jackson, and Hillsland. A veteran cast. They've been in a lot of big situations the last few years for Notre Dame. And a great Louisville defensive team on the court. Big thing offensive rebound of your ND. Here comes, here comes the flat screen. They Under 10 it. to go. 
Yeah, out of traffic. And Jennings leaves his guy. Jackson in traffic. Lost the handle. Threw it into the backcourt. And backcourt. Back back no basket. Backcourt violation as the ball was touched by Notre Dame. The crowd thinks Williams has put them ahead on the dunk. But it was a backcourt violation against Notre Dame. And I would wonder if they'll look at the clock to see if they should put more time on here for Louisville. You wonder if the timer heard the whistle. And there's no, oh my goodness, that was awfully close. Aaron Gody got a piece, Jim Burr said. But the interesting thing, the play worked, but Jackson was pressured so much he couldn't turn and get it to Luke Aaron Gody. Yeah, but Jim Burr judged Aaron Gody the first to touch it. Crowd didn't like the call. Now point six to go. They did not check a monitor. They feel comfortable that six tenths is the right time remaining. They're going to look now, though. Sean. Yeah. Well, the timer doesn't stop the clock there. It's stopped by the On officials the with that the precision whistle. timing system. That's right. But what, one of the things that's of interest now, if it stays at point six, and I think it will, that's enough time for a catch and shoot. Correct. You don't have to tip it as if it were four or less. Well, they're still going to look at the monitor, and I do wonder if it is about the timing issue. I think one would uh, be. Might be one. Yeah, yeah. That's, I thought there was more time when the whistle blew. And this could make a huge difference. You know, the philosophy exposed itself right there in a beautiful way. The pressure of Louisville to get Jackson so intent at getting to the rim, they never saw the kick out opportunity. Well designed play. He added two tenths, point eight now. After review of the monitor. This is a dribble shoot situation. Well, the, the most important man right now is Zeller. Now, like Zeller has got to be all over that ball and keep it from coming in cleanly. And you got Will Scott on the floor who's known for his shooting ability. Pin and get him to the corner. Williams gets it in. Will Scott, a three point air ball from the corner. Boy, Will Scott got the look. Well designed play. And they will head to overtime. Wondered about fatigue all night long. It has to be a factor right now on both sides. Here in the tough act to follow department tonight on Big Monday, first Big Monday of the year, presented by Bud Light, setting the tone for what's to come. Five minutes, first overtime game of the season for either of these teams. Both are worried about physical and mental fatigue coming in. Both played on a Saturday, a noon game. Notre Dame was home. And Louisville was at Villanova. Uh, advantage when you think of the Louisville with the four guard system and yep. pressuring and, and make it, making it tough uh, on the ball handling guards of Notre Dame. Two great plays at the end of uh, they got a great shot for Will Scott in the corner. And of course Notre Dame with that little play they had it set up on the drag to the hoop. And even after the turnover the hustle of Heron Gody to get to that ball before Williams could take it the other way. Big would have ended the game. So you want to be a coach, huh? Samuels will jump for Louisville, playing with four fouls with Knowles, Clark, McGee, and Williams. Heron Gody out there with four fouls for Notre Dame. Looks like Hillsland will jump with McElarney, Ayers, and Jackson. And overtime is underway. Samardo Samuels won the tip. Will they go right inside? Well, Clark's got the matchup with Heron Gody, so he's going to do it off the dribble, although he's got post up ability. Well, Hillsland's got Samuels. They need to go to him. Samuels can lock him down. Samuels working on Hillsland. They listen to Jay Billis. Hillsland's got to be a little tougher in getting him away from the block. Well, he's got to use his quickness, get around in front. They might be better off even fronting him in the post to make him throw over the top. Hillsland, oh. how about that drive? And with the left hand, Zach Hillsland scores, and now McElarney is on the court. Well, it looks like he turned it to. Oof. This is the fourth straight game that he has played all 40 minutes for Notre Dame, and he's gone beyond the 40 now with overtime tonight, grabbing at his left shin. Now, this is one tough kid. He's a. Bounce back attitude guy, a gamer. Oh, looks like he's got caught up in his own guy, Heron Gody going by. Yeah. Looks like an ankle, right? 
It did, and then it looks more now like Sean said. Maybe he just got kicked in that shin area. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the good news is he walked off. He didn't look to be in considerable pain. That's so the only way you're going to get him on the bench. <laughs> oh, he is something. And uh, Zeller has come off the bench for Notre Dame. That that Mike, two three zone. Uh, Mike making that move simply because they're not able to stop the post up people. They've got to get it to Clark in the middle. That's where the play is going to be made. And watch the rebounding too. You don't check out. McElhinney has gone to the table to check back in. Clark. That's a three. 13 for Clark. He's been quiet for quite a while. Right, Notre Dame right now. Go to the basket. Maybe we'll get a foul. That way Whoa. McElhinney gets back in. Jackson threw it away. Mike Bray thought it was deflected out. He was pleading with Jim Bird to overrule the call, and now he is screaming at Bob Donato. You know, I'm not so sure because the ball looked to me to change direction. Let's see. Yeah, yeah see that, that outside deflected. hand? Yeah, I thought so. And it was right in front of Mike Bray. He had the best look at it. You don't see Mike react like that very often. Well, there were some teeth rattled on that screen <laughs> by Samardo Samuels. They're just setting back picks, and Notre Dame's having to switch. Aaron Goaty with the four fouls still blocked the shot from Clark. 15 to shoot for Louisville. Sam is grabbed by McElarney. Boy, they took great advantage of the mismatch. Because of the screening. They're they were switching off the back yep. that put McElarney on Samuels. He had no shot, and he was lucky this wasn't intentional. He just grabs him here, and that easily could have been an intentional foul and probably should have been. Great set and read, and then use the power. Yeah, I think Notre Dame's gassed. Yep. They are absolutely. More back picks and putting him in a situation to switch or give up a layup. Williams, oh. tough shot. <laughs> 24 for Williams, one shy of his career high. Timeout, Notre Dame down by eight with 2.42 to go in overtime. Indeed. Ron Franklin, Fran Fischella standing by for that. We know they are enjoying watching the end of this great action from the Big East. Louisville up by eight with a spurt in overtime. And one of the key things I think is St. John's early in the year did the same thing. Everybody stays at home. They stretch. And now it's individual play. And Harren Gody at a disadvantage. You feel he got bumped a little bit. But just great execution by Jennings defensively. And how about this? Terrence Williams has been the best player on the floor. All around, he's done it in every single category. Well, you wonder about evidence of fatigue. Notre Dame has one field goal in the last nine minutes and 20 seconds. Well, they haven't been able to see the basket. The pressure on the ball has been tremendous. It's taken away a lot of vision. And boy, they are just settling now. That's that repost and not acknowledged. Ayers missed the three. Mike Bray might look back at that sequence at the end of regulation. They had their shot with the ball in a tie game, and the last shot of regulation didn't get a good opportunity. Well, the switch, McElarney now on Williams. And Louisville content to run clock. Eight point lead, two minutes to go in overtime, and McGee is bumped by Jackson. Uh, Denny Crum used to automatic switch everything, and Notre Dame getting caught in some situations that are very tough when they do it. Well, Crum had guys that were all the same size. That's true. Six five, six six. Uh, how tall was Ellison? Uh, well, he Too played. Tall. He played seven three. Too tall. That was impossible to stop. First free throw of the night for McGee. Well, apparently Purvis Ellison was impossible to stop too. You know, when you're in this building, you see that 86 banner, Louisville's national championship, 72-69 over Duke. I got the box score for that game. Ellison 25 and 11, Billis 4.3 rebounds. How many did you score when you played in the championship game? <laughs> A lot of screening. <laughs> Quick hitters you need. Peace. You don't need it. You don't need it. As Clark's going to take it. Meanwhile, they're just about ready to get underway in Norman. And Louisville is about to 
put this one away. Earl Clark the bucket. The lead is 12. Well, the Patino philosophy exhibited itself with the pressure, relentless in nature, and just psychologically an extraordinary impact. And I think they did wear Whoa. him down. That would have brought everybody out of the seat. That's the defense over the course of the first 40 minutes of this game, I think, really did wear Notre Dame down. Notre Dame still can't buy a bucket. And it looks like Heron Goldie, who seemed to cinch to get 30 points for the third game in a row, is going to end with 28. Unless he can score in the final minute. He's tired, too. McElarney tired. Look at this matchup. And with all the battles in the Big East, it's going to be tough night after night to play seven men, as Notre Dame is trying to do, in not many minutes from the two bench guys. And that's why they need peoples to get better. Others to contribute to Nash. Jackson, they need a quickie. They don't get it. Williams, another rebound. His 15th, 16th to go with 24 points. Tough loss. Great victory. Louisville will remain undefeated in Big East play. Go to 3 and 0 oh with. Number one in the country, Pittsburgh, coming in here on Saturday night. And you know the folks here in the Ville will be pumped up for that one. Heron Gody has just fouled out. As always, he battled valiantly tonight. And he departs with 28 points and 13 rebounds. Some ticker, though. Oh. Two points it. shy of his third straight 30 point game. This gives everything. Williams 24 points, 16 rebounds, 8 assists. I want to know how John Paquette and the people in the Big East office are going to pick the player of the week every week. For it's impossible. They, they ought to pick more than one. It's impossible. Player of the day is what they should go to. I mean, there are so many great performances in this league. Every week. Williams goes out. Deafening ovation from these great fans here in Louisville. Ten points for McGee. Number 14, Kyle Kerr checks into the car to place number 33. Only two points in overtime for Notre Dame. McElarney goes out. With Patino getting some of his bench people in. But more than anything, giving the fans a chance to salute some of the great performances by his players tonight. Rick really likes this team. You can understand why. Ayers. The final score in overtime, Louisville 87, Notre Dame 73. Coming up next on ESPN Texas and Oklahoma's Big Money presented by Bud Light continues. And for a wrap-up of this game, catch us over on ESPN News in just a couple of minutes. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the world.